In the last couple of videos, we talked about the big shape of the head. We also talked about the center line and the thirds. And we're gonna take things a step farther this time and talk about brow construction. This time I wanna stick specifically with the brow because it's something that I know a lot of students have a really hard time with, myself included, and I think we need to spend some time talking about it. Keep in mind that this is only one possible solution that fits this specific model. Once you understand the concepts involved, then the challenge is to be able to bend and modify these ideas in order to fit different types of people and the many brow and eye socket constructions that exist. Let's take a look. We're gonna start with what we did the first two weeks, right? Big shape of the head, center line, thirds, right? So we'll start with kind of an oval shape here for the cranial mass, right? Just like that. Pull the side plane of the head down. Gonna kind of wrap around this way, her head kind of comes down and pulls back in a little bit, right, kind of like that. This part, gonna swoop around from the back of the head down this way, and then rhythmically what we wanna connect over to the jaw, right, which is gonna swoop right over here, nice rhythmical sweep, and then the chin's gonna sit right about in there, right, so that gives us our head shape move our construction lines, clean this up a little bit, that got a little bit sloppy. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Let's make as nice a shape as we can here. There we go. Uh, so remember last time, after we got our big shape of the head, we looked for the center line, which comes up from the chin, but it needs to be in perspective, right? And her head's turned a bit, so it's not gonna be the exact center of the chin, it's gonna be shifted over just a little bit. It's gonna sit somewhere right about in here. Just pull that straight up. And if you want, you can curve this around the forehead, but not totally necessary. But it does actually technically go back that way. Right, and then we're gonna find the uh, back of the jaw, front of the ear separation, which is gonna sit right back in here, which on her tilts back pretty far. Right, it kind of sits like this. You know, and then her ear kind of sits back along here. Her ear sits naturally a little bit low. Right, kind of back this way. Right in there somewhere. Now, next up, we're gonna look for the thirds, just like we did last time, right? So hairline runs right up over here sits up over the change in plane of the forehead or right on it, which is kind of more her case, or maybe a little bit above it. Basically sits like right up in here. Now we're not looking up or down at her at all. So there's not a lot of like perspective on the head really. Uh, so everything stays relatively flat. Remember, we want to find kind of where the corner sits. Kind of right about there. And I talked a little bit about that last time. We'll talk about it more this time, but we're gonna get these thirds down here first, right? So we have the hairline, brow line. I'm just gonna take a quick guess, right? Brow line goes about here. Nose line about here. This looks about right. Kind of measure real quick. Make sure these are even. Pretty close. Pretty close. All right, we got that one. That one. That one. That's pretty good. Brow line, nose line. Right about there. Right, keeping everything pretty level for the most part. Seems good, okay. Always kind of clean things up as we go. Now, in this case, um, her ear sits a little bit low, but we're not really looking up or down at her. So these lines, if anything, maybe they tilt down just a little bit. I don't think so. I think they just kind of do this. 
right? But then her ear just kind of sits a little bit low. Like typically, like if we learn those kind of standard or generic measurements or whatever, the ear would sit right in that middle third, but hers sits a little bit low. No big deal. This needs to angle a little bit more. Okay, so now we need to start thinking about how we construct the brow, uh, what this line means and how it relates to the brow, and uh, how this relates to her head specifically, right? So first thing we kind of want to think about is how this corner relates to the head. Now, if you're used to Loomis, right? And I, know, I always talk about Loomis because Loomis is really popular uh, in terms of like head drawing methods. I, and that's how I learned as well. But there were things about it that I had a really hard time with. And I'm not going to say it's wrong and don't do it. I mean, it works. You just have to understand exactly what it is and why it is the way it is. And so if we look real quick just at a box, right? So we just draw a quick box here. I'm going to push the perspective on it a bit just to make a point. See, so here's our box. Right, say so it sits about like that. Um, if the corner of our box is here, remember that the head isn't really a box. It's also not really a cylinder. It's somewhere in between. It does have flat planes. There's a flat plane on the forehead. There's a flat plane on the side, but they're connected by a rounded plane. Right, so if we were to think of the head as a box, that rounded part rounds out across here. Right, this gets rounded out, this gets rounded out. Right, and then we have a rounded box. But keep in mind, what's happening now is this part's rounded. Now our flat plane, like the flat part of the box, now sits over here, and it sits over here. Right, so this part's flat, this part's flat, this part's rounded, right? We got round, round, flat, flat. Uh, when you look at Loomis, what Loomis is doing is he's trying to identify where the flat part of the head is, right? So when you look at Loomis, uh, he'll oftentimes draw something that looks like this, right? He'll have kind of his circle that he starts with. Right, and then he'll kind of pull the front plane down this way and sort of connect up the bottom and through here, right? And then he'll have like his center line. And then he goes and draws something like this, right? He just does this. And somehow it just ends up in exactly the right spot, which, you know, if that works for him, great. And if that works for you, that's great too. Uh, honestly, though, I had a really hard time with it. How do you know where this point goes? How do you know how big to make this circle? How do you know uh, how up or down it goes? You know, like I had a hard time with that. Eventually what I realized what was happening was what Loomis is identifying here isn't the corner, it's the flat part of the head, right? The flat part of the side of the head. So you have the rounded part and then the flat part. Here he's showing the flat part. Right, so the brow, say if the brow runs through here, and then it's gonna cut back this way and basically stop here. That's kind of what he's looking for. So the actual corner is like around here, right? And then it's rounding around that corner and hitting the flat part. And then Loomis was delineating that flat part with an oval that would sit about there. So if you look back here again, here is our boxy shape, right? Now we need to find some of the brow structure because that's the whole idea of what we're talking about this week is brow structure. So now we're gonna look for the glabella. Let's find kind of how the glabella drops down this way, right? Inside of the eye socket, sits back in here on this side. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is round out this shape, right? So her brow is kind of flat at first, and then it rounds around this corner this way. And does that, right? Now rhythmically, we can tie that together with the rounded part on the other side. Sort of wrapping around like that. 
and tie these together from side to side, which is always helpful, right? We want to use rhythms. Rhythms tie things together from side to side. Even if the middle part ends up getting erased or not used, this section will still rhythmically align with this section. And it'll help our eye move from one to the other, right? So we always want to use rhythms anytime we can. And uh, it'll help make a more solid kind of cohesive drawing. But notice we're rounding around the corner here. If you look at a skull real quick, keep in mind what we're seeing here. Remember from last week, our third line goes through where the eyebrows start. The eyebrows start on these little pads. There's a little pad here, a little pad here. You can kind of see it right, right in there, right? If that's where our third line goes, or for our brow line, notice the opening of the eye socket actually sits lower, right? It's actually down here a little bit farther underneath here. And we need to keep that into consideration. How that works is going to vary a lot from person to person. Right? Some people have really thick brow bones. Some people have thinner brow bones. This one's pretty thin. Here on her, she has a much kind of thicker type brow bone, which is actually why I chose this piece of reference, because it's going to create a bigger gap between our brow line that we draw and the rhythm line that we use to delineate the opening of the eye socket. And uh, so keep in mind, we have kind of like a flat section in through here a little bit. Right? And then it rounds across this way, right? where we have this rounded part of the head. And then we're going to hit this part back in here. And we got to figure out how to show that in our drawing. right? So this is kind of wrapping around. right? And then it kind of drops back a little bit this way. And she has pretty wide eye sockets. right? And then from here, uh, it's going to kind of cut back in. and then down, right? And then back up this way, right? Just like that. On this side, this part's kind of wrapping back around this direction. Wrapping in this way, cutting back down a bit and then back out to the cheekbone. That way we get some of the actual brow bone showing up here. And then we can adjust the shape of the head a little bit, right? It comes up and then kind of back where it hits some hair and stuff. It kind of makes more like that kind of shape. Keep in mind, the cranial mass isn't actually a perfect oval. It's actually cranial mass shaped, which is a little different. We just start with an oval, and then we probably need to adjust it a little bit here and there. All right, this part kind of cuts, swoops across here. Again, just making sure these align. This side aligns with this side. All right, so it's going to cut in a little bit, down a little bit, and back up. Right, so now we're starting to get that brow structure in there, kind of conforming to our rounded form. I'm going to put in the sweep of the nose real quick because that's going to be helpful. Just to help figure out Those will sit right around here. Uh, remember the two cylinder kind of wraps up under here a little bit. Actually, that get that kind of connection under there. We're not going to get into features. I'm not going to take this nose any farther than that because 
Uh, it's going to confuse things a little bit. And it's not what we need right now. So what do we do next? Next we need the actual opening of the eye socket, right? So the actual opening of the eye socket is going to sit in here. It's going to kind of wrap around this way. And then on this side it's wrapping around in this way. Now how, how do we know what's going on here, right? Because that's kind of confusing. So keep in mind what's happening there if we look at the skull again, Remember, what we did was we started with our brow line, right? Our brow line is actually above the opening of the eye socket a bit, right? And then we followed that around this way, around this rounded part, and then we followed it back across this way. But then down here, we're dealing with the actual opening of the eye socket. So what we're doing is we're cutting across the bone in through here and then down and around. Right? And how this works on different people is going to be different, depends on the muscle development in that area. Uh, ultimately, this shape here isn't all that important, if I'm being honest, because that doesn't end up in your final drawing. That's just a construction line to help close off the eye socket. Um, I like drawing it this way, because it kind of helps conform to the boxy shape of the head a little bit more, because you can see how that corner tends to line up right with this line. And if I'm really careful, that'll work almost every time. Uh, but here, what we're finding here is the actual opening of the eye socket now. And this is the thickness of the bone. Right? So now this is going to rhythmically connect from side to side here. Right? It's going to connect from here over to here. Right? Just like that. Now, keep in mind... This is a rhythmical connection. So the center of that line, we don't really need it much because what's really happening is our eye socket is actually connecting kind of down across this way. Right, more like that and kind of like down in here. And this line, this part of the line isn't all that important. What's important is rhythmically connecting this one to this one to help our eye move throughout the drawing a little bit better. Now, if we find this angle here and duplicate it here to find the side plane of the nose, that'll lead us back to the tear duct, which is going to sit right here. Right? Notice it lines up on this line that I drew that kind of aligns the corners of the eye. Well, I draw this line in a way that actually aligns the tear ducts. And we'll talk about this more when we talk about features. We don't have to go into this right now. That's probably too much right now. Because what I did with that line actually is I used it to align the, uh, where the socket, where I'm going to cut inward on the, for the eye sockets. And in, in this case, it just happens to align with the tear duct. So that worked out well. But we'll talk more about this line in the future. We're not going to draw eyes right now because it's too much. We'll, again, we'll get into that in future uh, future videos. You can separate out the bottom plane of the nose real quick just because it seems a little odd having an incomplete shape down here. So we'll just kind of separate out the bottom plane. And I don't think we need to take it any farther than that. Uh, the next thing we need to think about, partly, is maybe the, the side plane, right? So remember, there's two things we could do. We could either find the side plane of the box, which sits here, right, and comes all the way out to our line here that we use for the box, or we can do it more Loomis style at this point and pull it back a little bit and look for the flat part of the box, right? Maybe it sits here. Either one is fine. It, it doesn't really matter. Just know that there's a rounded part in here. That's the important part. Okay, so next we're just going to talk about one more thing real quick, and that is uh, the eyebrows, right? Because the eyebrows need to be added onto our brow shape here. And again, keep in mind that the eyebrows, right, our brow line here, ran right through where the eyebrows start. So the first eyebrow is going to start here. Not really first, but one of them is going to start here. Another one's going to start 
just to the other side of there, right? More like here. Right, they're gonna start there and there, basically where those two little flat pads were on the skull. And now we need to use another uh, rhythmical connection, right, to align our eyebrows. So we're gonna rhythmically align the eyebrows across this way and over here. And they wrap way down over here. Right, they do this. And then there's a connection point. If you want, you can do this as well, right? This, you'll see this pretty frequently, but I only do this for certain eyebrows, you know, for people whose eyebrows actually arc that direction. And in this case, I don't feel like they do that. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna pull it the other way and go like this, right across this way, like that. So I feel like that's more in line with what her eyebrows do specifically and then this way right and then from there they kind of wrap down this way come up this direction right cut across a little bit kind of like that and then they come down this way Right, same thing over here. Just gonna wrap around. And there's a bug on my drawing. There we go. Wraps up this direction, across this way. And there we go, then we have some eyebrows on there. There's a lot of different eyebrow rhythms you can use, right? I mean, they can go right across this way and this way, kind of like I showed, right? And then they would start like kind of here and here, uh, or they can go across this way, kind of go more like this, which is kind of more like what I just showed a second ago, where it actually arcs this direction on each side. And there's more. Right, like we don't have time to go into every type of eyebrow, but you have to just kind of look at who you're drawing and determine uh, what type of eyebrow you need to use. Anyway, this is pretty much it for this week. So brow construction uh, is a little bit complicated, to be honest, it's, it's not easy. And it requires some logic and some thinking, and you have to really kind of take your time with it and really think through what's going on with the head, right? boxy shape of the head, the rounded parts of the head, and how the brow relates to that. You know, our third line, what does that relate to? What does our opening of the eye socket relate to? You know, if you want to think more like Loomis, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you just need to know what it is he's doing here and why. You know, and how to make that work. So that's pretty much it. Brow structure, not an easy thing. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I will talk about them. I don't know that I have time to answer literally every single one, but I'll answer as many as I can for sure. Because this is a, a difficult, uh, difficult thing to draw. One of the more complex parts of the head. I mean, the features are complex themselves, but in terms of the overall head construction, I'd say the brow is, is probably one of the more difficult parts. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time.